So this is the review for the chapter eight algebra test. Your test questions tomorrow look just like these. I'm going to give you about two minutes to try this question, all right? We have data, all right? We have hours per week. I want you to try this whole slide. And yes, I know that there's two E's, that's a typo. Um, first thing that you need to do is find your five number summary. So what you need to do to find your five number summary is you need to go to stat and edit and type the numbers into one of your L columns. Now I have all these filled out already because I have all of them filled out for the whole thing, all right? So go ahead and type your numbers into your L1, please. Find your five number summary, draw what you think the box and whisker plot would look like, where it says describe the data distribution. This is where they wanna know, is it symmetric, skewed left or skewed right? And then they want you to uh, say which measure of central tendency is the best predictor. So they're asking you, based on whether it's symmetric, skewed left, or skewed right, should you use the mean or the median? Find that value. Then they ask you, should you use the IQR or standard deviation? And find that value. I'm going to give you about two minutes right now. Go ahead and solve this whole slide, please. All right, so I'm gonna get going on this one. I typed all my data into my L1 column. So to get my five number summary, I have to do stat, calc, one variable statistics. I need to use my L1 column. So I'm gonna go down to calculate. Remember that your five number summary is towards the bottom of this list. So my min is three, my Q1 is four, my median is 12, my Q3 is 22, and my max is 25. When you go to create your box and whisker plot, remember that you're gonna to have to draw this. Um, so I'm gonna put a line at each of these numbers. So I'm gonna put a line at three, a line at four, a line at 12, a line at 22, and a line at 25. So now that I have my lines, remember you need to make your whiskers with the first and the second and the fourth and the fifth, and then you're creating a box. Now you have to determine whether that the data distribution is symmetric, skewed left or skewed right. This is sort of a misleading example a little bit, and it has to do with the spacing of the numbers. This spacing of the numbers because they're double digit versus single digit on the left versus the right. 
it makes it look like it's skewed to the right, but this is more symmetric than anything else. If you said skewed to the right, I could see why you said that. Um, but when you take a look at how many numbers are actually here, um, there's a difference of nine numbers. Remember, you want to look at your median in the middle here. There's nine numbers to the left and there are 13 numbers to the right. So is this pretty close to being in the middle? Yes, it is. All right. It's sort of a misleading example here. And it's only because of the spacing of the numbers. All right. These double digit numbers take up more space. So it looks longer than what it actually is. Don't worry on your test and on the review, it will be very, very clear what they are. All right. This one was sort of a bad example. All right. To be quite honest with you. Which measure of central tendency is the best predictor of the data? Anytime that it's symmetric, you use the mean, all right? Anytime that it's symmetric, you use the mean. Now, remember the mean in our data is at the very top of our list. So the mean is 13.18. Um, now, most of the questions will say round to the nearest hundredth. So that's what I'm gonna do here, 13.18. Will the IQR or standard deviation describe the spread better? Anytime that you use the, anytime that it's symmetric, use the mean and standard deviation. So standard deviation, find that value. Now standard deviation is this symbol, right? It's the circle with the little line above it. So rounded to the nearest hundredth, this is going to be 8.43. So symmetric is mean and standard deviation. Skewed left or right would be median, and IQR, all right? Please make sure that you realize that. And again, I'm sorry for this example. It's not exactly the best example in the world. Let's take a look at question number two. Now, question number two has two different bakeries and they want you to calculate the IQR for both bakeries. Let me give you some of the data just to save ourselves some time here. When you go to type this into your L1 and type bakery B into your L2, when you go to do your five number summary, Q1 for bakery A is nine. Q3 for bakery A is 14. Go ahead and find the IQR. For bakery B, Q1 is seven and Q3 is 11. Go ahead and find the IQR for both of them and then determine whether bakery A or B is more consistent and how do you know? So for the IQR, remember the formula for IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So I have to do 14 minus nine here. 14 minus nine is five. I have to do 11 minus seven here, which is four. So is bakery A or B more consistent? It would be bakery B. How do I know that? Because that has the lower IQR. The lower the IQR, the lower the standard deviation, the more consistent, the more reliable your data is. The lower the IQR, the more consistent and more um, predictable your data is. Take a look at question number three. Construct a dot plot for the data. Describe the distribution. So I wanna know whether it is symmetric, skewed left or skewed right. And then there are a couple questions to answer. Go ahead and do question number three, please.
so when you're going to do your dot plot, I would suggest crossing these numbers out as you go. Remember, you want to make it all the same size. So we have a three, we have a seven, we have an eight, we have a one and a two, we have an eight and a 10, seven and a 10, and we have a three and an eight. So when we're taking a look at this one, um, I would say personally that this one is skewed to the left, all right? This part is significantly longer than this part, all right? So that part is significantly longer, so that is skewed to the left. How, how many students read eight or more books? Well, eight or more would be eights, nines, and tens, so there were five total. How many students read less than seven? Now, less than seven does not include seven, so it'd only be the ones, the twos, and the threes here, so that would be four people total. Let's take a look at number four. This has a histogram already done for you about uh, scores of students on a quiz, so answer the three questions, please, about the histogram. How many total students took the quiz? Well, there are two students here. There are five students here. There are four here, two here, and one here. Five plus two plus four plus two plus one means that there were 14 total. How many had scores of four or higher? Four or higher would be right here. There are three of them. How many students had scores of less than two? Well, less than two would be a one. So there are two students there. Take a look at question number five. Now, this is probably one of the longest questions of the whole thing today, all right? Um, create a stem, double stem and leaf plot. I already did that for you, all right? Remember that when you're looking at stem and leaf plots, the stems are the first numbers in the double digit number. The leaves are the second numbers in the double digit number. So they wanna know whether set number one is symmetric skewed left or skewed right. They want to know, would you use the mean or the median? And whether you would use standard deviation or IQR. And what those are. Same exact thing for data set number two. Let me give you about two minutes because you're going to have to type that data into your stat edit all right or so please type in that data from data set number one and data set number two and do your calculations please i'm going to give you about two minutes for this
So when you're looking at data set number one and you have to decide whether it's symmetric, skewed left or skewed right, you always need your stems to go in order from least to greatest. So if I turn this and turn it upside down, I'm going to have a two, a three, a five, a zero, a three, a five, a five, and a nine. And then I'm going to have a zero, a five, and a six. And I'm going to have a one. So when I take a look at this, I can see that it's going up and down. It's about the same on both. So therefore, this is symmetric. Data set number one is symmetric. If it's symmetric, you have to use the mean um, and the standard deviation. Um, I typed them into my L4, so stat, calc, one variable statistics. I need to personally change this to L4 because that's where my numbers are. The mean is at the top. The mean is the X with the little line above it. So that is 74.5. And the standard deviation, that is the circle with the little line above it. So that is 10.48 when I round to the nearest tenth or round to the nearest hundredth. For data set number two, I have a, I'm just going to switch colors here. I have a six, I have a zero, I have a three and a five. I have a zero, one, four, and six. I have a one, two, three, and five. I can tell that this one is going down to the left and getting stretched out to the left here. Since it's getting stretched out to the left, it is skewed left since the longer tail part, the bottom of the hill is to the left. Um, if it's skewed left, we want to use the median and we want to use the IQR. So I need to, I type these into my L5. So I need to do one variable statistics on my L5. You might've typed it in a different place. So I need to go down to median. I need to scroll down. Median is 82.5. And my IQR, Q3 minus Q1, 91.5 minus 74 gives me 17.5. So again, just be careful. I think the hardest part of this question is right here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Is right here in the middle. When you go to look at your skew, um, you have to make sure that your stems are going in order from least to greatest, all right? If you do it the other way, it's going to be the exact opposite answer. Take a look at number six. In number six, what is the IQR? What is the interquartile range of the data represented by the box and whisker plot? These questions from now until the end will be multiple choice on your test. So the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Q3 and Q1 are the edges of the boxes. This is Q1 and this is Q3. So Q3 is 23, Q1 is 17. 23 minus 17 gives you six. So that would be the IQR. Take a look at the next one. Identify the scatter plots as skewed left, skewed right, or symmetric. Pick out which one is which, please. Skewed left, skewed right, and symmetric. In the first one, all right, in the first one, this goes up and down. So this is symmetric. In the middle one, the longer part is being stretched out over to the left. So this is skewed left. Over here, the longer part is being stretched out to the right. So this is skewed right. Again, you'll have some sort of question and it'll be multiple choice. Take a look at number eight. What is the median of this box and whisker plot? 
Super easy question. The median is that line inside of the box. So the median is seven. Take a look at number nine. Now in number nine, I'm not gonna have you actually do this one. I'm just gonna talk about it. All right, what is the mean of the data? First of all, remember mean is the X with a little line above it. When you have a stem and leaf plot, when you go to type it into your L1, you have to make sure that you're typing in the actual numbers. So this is really a, you really have a 30, a 30, a 31, and a 32. You have a 42, 49, 58, 58, 67, 67, 69, 78, and 90. Remember that the stem is the first number in your double digit number. When you go to type them into your L1 um, to find your mean, you have to make sure that you're typing in the actual numbers, not just the leaves, all right? You need that stem in there also. So the mean, you'd type it into your stat calc, um, one variable statistics. This one actually ends up being 53.92 for your mean. Take a look at number 10. According to the histogram below, how many students sent less than six texts? Less than six. So less than six would be represented by all three of these bars. You have one person here, you have three people here, and you have four people here. One plus three plus four is eight people total. Take a look at number 11. Find the data shown in the dot for the data shown in the dot plot below. Find the standard deviation. Again, I'm not going to have you do this one. I just want to talk about the dot plot. When you go to type it into your L1, you would have an 18, a 21. You'd have to type in four 22s because you have 22, 22, 22, 22. You have three 23s, two 24s, a 26, and a 28. Do your um, stat calc one variable statistics. Standard deviation here is that symbol, and it would round to 2.30. Now, this last question is a very, very easy question, but tons of people get it wrong every year. The box and whisker plot describes the number of books per student a class checked out. What percent of students checked out more than eight books? What percent of students checked out more than eight books? What you have to remember about a box and whisker plot is that in between your min and Q1, that represents 25% of the graph. In between Q1 and the median, that represents 25% of the graph. In between the median and Q3, that represents 25% of the graph. And then in between Q3 and your max, that represents 25% of the graph. So half of the data is above the median, half of the data is below the median. So what percent checked out more than eight books? More than eight would be represented by what I circled here. So that would be 25%. So again, I just want to go back to one little picture. All right. This picture is extremely important. When it is equal on both sides, it's symmetric. When it's symmetric, you use the mean and standard deviation. When it is skewed left, it's stretched out to the left. That's where the bottom of that graph is. It's being stretched out to the left. Skewed right, it's being stretched out to the right. If it's skewed left or skewed right, you use the median and your IQR. Remember the IQR is Q3 minus Q1.